it's about 36 degrees this morning uh, that's good I got my little propane heater going whilst the weight on the fiery dragons preheater to warm up right there see them little red numbers uh, anyway today's goal is to get this thing back together and get it on the road because it's too cold to be out here working what I'm gonna do first is undo the uh, oil pan bolt so I drop it down so I get this cover on I gotta put a sleeve on the harmonic dampener because you know the uh, seal or a groove in it and then I reckon we'll keep on trucking get the heads on intake exhaust all that good stuff so let's get to busy Well, here's the deal on the oil pan bolts. Uh, I got an oil cooler line right here that goes all the way down the side, right in line with the bolts. Can't get but the two front bolts loose. So, uh, what we're gonna do, I've already done a trial fit. Take this cover, I got the gasket on it, and it'll go without uh, dropping the oil pan. So we're gonna try it. I'm gonna put lots and lots of RT and V in that area and that area, because I do not want any oil leaks. Also, and oh by the way, this little U that holds the gasket, well, spot wells broke on either end of it, so I had to do a little tack welding to hold that on. Hopefully that'll work. So, let's get this cover on and see how it goes. All right, fingers crossed that this works. All right, the harmonic dampener, well, she's got a pretty good groove right there where my fingernail is that the uh, seal wore in it. Well, what you do is, well, you, I bought a whole kit. It's the timing cover gaskets and seal, and you get this little sleeve bushing thing, and all you do is just drive it over it. It's got some uh, Loctite right here that you put on the inside of it, and uh, you just drive it on there, but you have to be very careful because it's really, really thin. So let me get that knocked on there and then we'll get the dampener put on. Well, <laughs> I forgot to hit record. So uh, yeah, I got that on anyway. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and get this put on and then uh, I guess it'll be time to put some heads on. Here's an FYI before I put this other head on. Here's the gasket. I'm using 7733. PT-2, it's uh, 39,000 thick. I was going to use a steel shim gasket, they're 15,000. Trying to raise compression and you know, close the, the squish, the quench area up a little bit. Then I got to thinking, this old block's got a lot of miles on it. The heads, I don't know how many miles they got on them, which I checked them for straightness and they seem to be pretty good. But still, I got to thinking, I believe I feel better using this gasket here. A steel shim gasket would be fine on one that's just been decked, head been shaved. Anyway, I decided to use this. Also, don't forget grid sealer on your head bolts because they go all the way through the water jacket. And I torque them in three steps. I do 25, 45, and 65 feet each pound. And you will see me use a cheat sheet because there's no way I'm going to remember that sequence right there. I can't remember what I did five minutes ago. You think I'm gonna remember that? Anyway, let me get this other head on.
Well, that was so much fun, and I hope I never have to do it again. Uh, I'm sure I will, though, considering this is my job. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think next we'll put the valve train in. I'll start with my lifters and then the dog bones and uh, spider. Then we'll put the push rods in, rocker arms, and set the valve lash. Then it'll be time to put the intake on it. Oh, something else I forgot. Remember that ground strap I broke on the back of that head? Well, I forgot to uh, make a new end for that. I forgot to put it on the head. So we'll have to do that sometime. Y'all remind me, because I forget. Well, here's the dog bone that you might have heard me mention. Uh, it goes on top of the lifters. You can see a flat spot on either side of the lifter. This is the top of it. Well, it goes just like that right there. And it keeps that lifter from turning because you got that roller there. And if it gets turned sideways, well, it'll, it'll wear the cam out. You don't want that. Anyway, let me get them in and finish up the valve train. Well, we got all the valve drain in, so now it's time to set valve lash and tighten up these rocker arms. Uh, there's a blue million different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Well, I usually alternate between a couple of different methods. I'm gonna show you this one here. You end up turning the crank twice and that's it. Uh, you get it on top dead center, number one on compression stroke. And you will adjust both valves. Then you turn it 90 degrees, the crank, you turn it 90 degrees, you do number eight, both valves. And then you turn it 90 degrees, then you do number four valves. You're going through the firing order if you haven't figured it out yet. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Uh, when, once you get through, you will have turned that crank twice and that's it. Uh, pretty simple. Now as far as how do I adjust them? Well, I just put my socket on the nut there. I grab my push rod down here and I just twist it back and forth like that right there until I feel a slight drag. I'll go a quarter to a half a turn more. I'm probably gonna do a half a turn on these and that's it. It really is that simple. So let me simply get it done. Let me apologize first for the background noise. The old fire dragon, she's pretty loud, but I ain't gonna be cold, so y'all just have to deal with it. <laughs> uh, anyway, got all the valves adjusted, I think now. I'm gonna put the intake on, but before I do that, I wanna pour a little bit of oil out in the middle and pour some on the rocker arms and all that. But before I do that, I forgot that I have not drained the oil. So let me get my pan and get under it. We'll drain the earls and uh, we'll see if we get any water out of it. Well, it's a little bit chilly down here on the floor, so let's hurry up and see if we're getting any water out of the earls. No, sir, no water. So I guess I just overfilled it and I just dropped the drain plug down in the bucket too, so that's good. <laughs> uh, once it gets draining, I guess I'll fish that out. Well, I'm very glad and very happy that there was no water that came out of that drain plug. Uh, I don't know how I overfilled it. Remember, you know, at the beginning of the video, my, my dipstick showed that it was over full and I thought it might be water. I don't know how I did it. Anyway, very glad that it was no water. What I always like to do is, uh, before I button all this up, I pour some Earl on the lifters here and uh, I pour it across the rocker arms. I don't know if it matters. That's just the way I've always done it. Anyway, after I do that, we'll get the intake on the valve covers and uh, I guess with them we'll start putting the front of the motor on. Well, there's my intake. It's an Edelbrock Performer and that's about all I can tell you about it. 
Uh, I bought it because, well, it's the cheapest they had. Uh, actually, the reason I bought this one is because it'll do a square bore or a spread bore. You know, I may want to put a holly on there. I might want to put a quadrajet on there. Never know. So I got it where it'll do both. Uh, that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> I've told y'all, I'm not an engine builder. So, you know, don't listen to me for horsepower advice. What I do is get online and I'll try to find somebody that's building something similar and see what their specs are and go from there. Anyway, let's get this intake on there. Approximately two and a half years old. They're from China by way of eBay. When I got them, I had to do some work on them because they were bent. They wouldn't fit with the seal. I finally got them to fit, and they don't leak. But uh, the chrome is just is just such high quality. I got it for you. Ain't got no choice. Breather right here. I'm gonna put it over here now. Oh, it looks beautiful right there. Well, it's starting to look like something now. That intake soil looks pretty. Um, I'm not gonna put the distributor in right now because I want to put my little shaft in there and try to pump the lifters up. Carburetor ain't going on yet because I'm using the 600 double pumper that was on Dude. It needs to be gone through. I haven't done that yet, so I'm gonna wait putting that on. Uh, what else? I gotta hook up my my PCV. Uh, I gotta have a fitting on that vacuum port right back there for my power brakes. That's a bunch of little stuff. Gotta hook up a fuel pressure regulator. But I think right now I'm gonna go ahead and put the water pump on and actually put the accessories on first. Then we'll put the water pump on. I got two studs I gotta put back on from accessories and they use a star pattern uh, head to put it back on. Uh, I found my universal star pattern wrench right here. It's very, very handy. Oh, I got up here. I don't know where it goes. Right there, maybe. We have made quite a bit of progress today. Uh, I believe I can finish it up tomorrow if I don't dilly-dally. <laughs> what does that even mean? Where did that come from, dilly-dally? <laughs> anyway, I believe we can finish it up tomorrow. 
I'm probably going to have to go to town and find some fittings and whatnot. Uh, again, I apologize for the background noise. I done turned the fire dragon off. Uh, she's pretty loud, but I ain't going to be cold, I'm telling you right now. You just have to get over it. Anyway, I'm going in the house, and we'll hit it again tomorrow. Well, it's the next day, again. I done been to town, got a couple of bags of whatnots over there. Uh, hopefully that'll help us finish up this job. I think we'll start today with mounting this fuel pressure regulator on the firewall over there. I'm gonna cut my fuel lines, just cut them off, and slip a hose over them with a you know hose clamp. Then we'll run into this fuel pressure regulator with the barb fitting. Uh, then I'll have to plumb it to the car roster course. Uh, let's just start with doing that. Well, I got the bracket on the firewall. I used a couple of self-tapping screws. Hopefully, I didn't hit anything important on the other side. Anyway, I got my regulatory device here. I got my fittings in it. Well, I got to thinking, you know, that electric pump, the one in the tank, that's the one I'm using, it had a return line. Uh, this regulator, it does not have a return line. I don't know if it's gonna be too much work on that pump, sort of deadheading against this all the time, or do I need to get a regulator with a return? I'm gonna use this for now. I'll do a little studying on it. Uh, I don't wanna burn that pump up is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I don't have to drop that tank again. That's not a fun experience. Anyway, I'm gonna get this mounted over there. I gotta cut the supply line, put a hose on it, put a hose on here. Then I may stick the carburetor roster on here just to uh, get an idea of how to run my lines and then we'll have to pull it back off and, and rebuild it. So let me get all that done. Well, we got all the fuel lines on. You can see my dual feed right there. That's pretty fancy stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think it'll work pretty good, but I forgot one thing. I don't have a gauge for my regulatory device there. Forgot all about that. We'll just have to guess. If I can't find a gauge around here, we'll just have to guess at the fuel pressure for now. Um, but that, I believe, is done. Now I'm fixing to work on the cooling system. I got all new hoses, upper and lower radiator hose, both heater hoses, because, you know, it split that one hose and it feels really, really flimsy. Anyway, I'm gonna change them now, uh, get all that hooked up. I gotta get the radiator in first. And then there's something I wanna show you about these Vortec heads and coolant bypass and all that. We'll talk about that when I get uh, all the cooling system back together. Well, I just got back from Ireland again. Got another sack full of whatnots. Trying to get all this plumbing done, all the vacuum lines. And when, it, when a project gets to this stage right here, well, it just, it gets on my nerves, I'm telling you. All this little old knick-knack bull crap. I just, I don't like doing it. Uh, anyway, I got the cooling system done now. I got the radiator and shroud and all the new hoses. Don't be making fun of my red vacuum lines. That's, that's all I got. It's sporty looking. Don't be making fun of it. Uh, anyway, I got all the vacuum lines. I ain't got but one vacuum port. The one coming out of the back of the carb roster. Um, the one in the intake, can't use. The float bowl hangs over it and, well, you just can't use it. So I got one vacuum port on the carburetor and that's it. And I, got, I think I got one up here for the distributor for the vacuum advance. Um, anyway, oh, I got me a gauge. See a gauge right there? Got that at O'Reilly's. Can't really see it, but I got a gauge now. We can set the fuel pressure. Oh, I got the belt on. That's cool. Now let me tell y'all about the cooling real quick. Vortec heads, well, Vortec motors. Well, let me go back further. Uh, the old small block Chevrolets, they have a hole on this side of the water pump. It's got three holes. Well, that bottom hole is called a coolant bypass. It keeps the system, when it's cold and the thermostat hadn't opened, it keeps the cooling system from building up pressure on one side and vacuum on the other, you know, cavitating and all that uh, keeps it from doing that. Well, on the Vortex, they did away with that hole and they went to, well, it'd be a, a hose from your water pump to that fitting right there. Um, I don't have a fitting on my water pump, as you can see. So what I did was the next best thing. I drilled four holes in my thermostat right there, and that's that's supposed to be good enough. I guess we'll find out. If it don't work, then I'll have to do something different. Um, but anyway, that's yeah, that's what's different. Oh well, let me show you on the heads what's what, what I'm talking about. Here is a Vortec head. Here is the head that come off this motor and it's pretty much uh, the same as any other small block Chevrolet. Uh, the coolant bypass on 
this block, this head, is right here. See that hole? That's the, the third hole on the passenger side there on the water pump. Well, that's where it comes out. Look over here on the Vortec head. It ain't there. They did the bypass from the water pump to the intake manifold. If you put Vortec heads on something, you've, you've got to do something about the uh, bypass, coolant bypass. Or it, you know, it may run hot when you first start it up. Uh, I decided to uh, drill holes in the thermostat and uh, if that don't work, well, I'll have to do something else. I'll just have to, you know, keep an eye on the temperature till I see how it's gonna do. But let me tell you all about this great news. I was working in this area right here a while ago. I think I was putting this hose on or putting the oil cooler lines on or something. But I looked right down in that area there and well, I found this. You might ask, well, what is that? Well, that is a rocker arm pivot ball. <laughs> I, uh, when I was putting the rocker arms on this side, I think I had them sitting here or they may have been up here. I don't remember. Well, guess what I get to do? I get to take this valve cover off and figure out which rocker arm is missing its pivot ball. Yep. Uh, I guess I'm gonna do that tonight and then after that, I'm gonna call it night because it's getting late. I was hoping to have it running today. Well, that ain't gonna happen. I ain't even tore the carb roster apart yet. Still gotta go through it. Maybe tomorrow? Well, I pulled both valve covers off and there is no missing pivot ball, so that's good. Then I just happened to remember, hey, I wonder if it come off the stock heads. I come over here and looked. Sure enough, that right there is missing. That's where it goes. Anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow. There's something I've been meaning to do for several weeks. And when I say several weeks, I mean a couple of months. Uh, well, y'all know how my brain is. I can't remember nothing. Anyway, uh, some subscribers, y'all, there's been, I think, four of you have sent me some stuff. Uh, here's a couple of them right here. This is this little screw, electric screwdriver. Uh, it's got an assortment of stuff in the toolbox. Uh, pretty handy. I've used it a couple of times, just not on the channel yet. Got a handy-dandy little flashlight there. And you hit that button there, and it'll spin into a straight uh, instead of 90. Pretty handy. Appreciate that. I believe uh, Preacher Jarvis sent me that. Uh, if I ain't mistaken, he's from North Carolina. And this here was in the same box, so I'm assuming y'all know each other, friends, relatives. I don't know. In the same box. Uh, I believe Kirby sent me these paper towels here. They're pretty handy. I tell you what, they are extremely tough. You can't hardly tear the things. Anyway, appreciate that. And I got two more things to show you, but they're not here. So let me go uh, where they're at, and I'll show you. One of y'all saw in the John Deere AH video that my flag was looking a little tattered. Been meaning to change it for weeks. And <laughs> once again, my little pea brain just never could think of it. Uh, Zarlinga, that's what was on the package from Illinois. Sent me that. He uh, he actually commented and said he was going to send me one. and Well, he did. I appreciate that. A bunch. Got me a whole box of squirt bottles right here. Uh, Super Lady USA sent them from Tennessee, right here in Tennessee. I guess you saw me struggling on the F600 with my little squirt bottle. These will come in very, very handy. Last but definitely not least, Robert from uh, New York sent me a whole set of uh, 327 pistons and rods. And these are brand spankingly new. There's no scuff marks, nothing on them. They're 30 over. Um... Dude, you know, has a 327 in. I don't know if we're gonna put them in there or not because, well, these suckers have got some great big old knots on the top of them. <laughs> That's gonna make some good compression. But I wanna keep Dude a street vehicle, so uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put them in Dude. We'll put them in something though. It'll be a pretty hot little motor. Anyway, thank y'all for sending me everything you sent me. Appreciate it. Well, I think we'll start today with tearing this old carver roster apart. Like I said, this is one that was on Dude. If you remember, dude wasn't running all that good when his carburetor was on there, but uh, you also got to remember that the uh, timing chain was really, really loose. So I sort of think that's why it was running like garbage. But let's tear this part anyway, make sure it ain't all nasty inside. Ain't much to tearing them apart. Take these bolts out. Well, my little ratchet. Well, it be stupid. I will sling you across this garage, little buddy.
Well, I got the primary side cleaned up finally. Let me tell you what, these dead lame gaskets, wow, they might as well have been super glued on. It took me, I'd say an hour to scrape all this gasket stuff off. I, I, I don't know that I want to do the uh, secondary side because of that. Anyway, it was like I thought, it was not stopped up anywhere. It looked pretty good. Uh, accelerator pump, it's a little stiff. I'm gonna put a new one of them in, a new power valve, and we're gonna put it back together. And much as I dread it, I guess I'll have to do the secondary side. Well, I got the primary side back together, and whilst I was putting it back together, I noticed something very interesting. Remember how I said that dude sort of ran like garbage with this carbon roster? Well, I think I know why. Uh, here is your uh, accelerator pump arm lever, whatever you want to call it. This little fella here's an adjustment for it, and it comes down, pushes that down. Well, look at here. See that right there? <laughs> that, that is incorrect. Uh, that should be touching. It should be just maybe a tiny amount of pressure on that. So as soon as you hit the throttle, it'll push it down. Well, watch how far the throttle moves before it ever, well, I can't do it because it's sitting on the thing. But anyway, it should not have that that much play. I mean, that's yeah, a little ridiculous. So I'll definitely have to do some adjusting on that. Uh, probably wait till I get it on the truck. Anyway, let me get the secondary part and look at it. Here is the secondary side, and I'm glad I took it apart, even though I did have to literally beat the metering block off of it. I'm telling you, I don't know what them gaskets are made of. But dang, they sure stick good. Uh, anyway, it's, it's a little nasty in there, so it's a good thing I took it off. I'm not real sure those jets ain't stopped up a little bit. Anyway, let me get it cleaned up. I just wanted to show you something here while I was cleaning this uh, secondary side. Um, your pump shot, it comes out that hole there, and here's your two little squirters. There's one hole there, there's the other hole there. It screws in there. Well, you got a little check valve that goes down in there too. What that's for is it'll raise up when you get a squirt for the pump shot, and then when it goes back down, the, the uh, accelerator pump you know, goes back down, well, this will close off where you won't suck air back. It'll actually fill the accelerator pump area with gasoline well this was stuck down in a hole and wouldn't let anything by so between it being stuck and this other one the other uh, accelerator pump arm being out of adjustment i had zero pump shot on this carb no wonder i don't like garbage anyway i got the meter in block soaking in the uh chem dip over because i'm not fighting that gasket hopefully that chem dip will loosen it up and once I get that out and get it cleaned up, we'll put her back together. Well, the old carb roster, it's rebuilt. Um, I was going to uh, put the distributor shaft in there and try to pump the lifters up. Well, I don't know what I did with that shaft. I guarantee you it's in a very secure and safe place, but where that's at, well, y'all know as much about that as I do. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and put the carb roster on. And then uh, I got to put plugs in it. I got to make plug wires, uh, what else? Oh, I got to wire up the distributor. You got to put antifreeze in it. Oh, look at this right here. This is the thermostat that was in it before I tore it down. Well, you can see daylight through it. See it there? Well, let me show you. Right here. See that little gold piece? Well, it's all folded up. It should look like this one over here. Well, I don't remember when I put that thermostat in this truck. It's been a few years. Well, let me back up to you this first. Ever since I've owned this truck, which has been a lot of years, every winter I'd have to put a piece of cardboard over just about the entire radiator because it just wouldn't have any heat. Once I'd do that, oh, it'd, it'd burn you up. Um, well, the last several years I had no heat no matter what I did. Uh, couldn't figure it out. Well, when, it, when the cold weather hit this year, or cool weather, uh, the thermostat, it wouldn't move off 140 degrees or so. I thought maybe my uh, temperature gauge was bad or the sending unit. Well, I put my heat gun on the motor one day and it was about 140 degrees. <laughs> well, that's why. My thermostat was always stuck open. Well, I mean wide open. So yeah, I might actually have a little bit of heat now. Anyway, let me get busy and get some of this stuff done. Hook up my 
Here's my distributor I bought on Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's made in China. It's probably a piece of junk, but that's the best I can do right now. Uh, might be wondering, where is your gear at? Well, let me tell you. I don't know what material that gear was made out of. Well, let me back up. Depending on what your cam is made out of determines what type of gear you have to run on your distributor. I don't know what that gear was. Uh, called comp cams to see what my cam was made out of. And, well, the answer he gave me was kind of surprising. He said, I don't know. Uh, can't even tell by the part number. He said, we may run out of material for this type of camshaft. Well, we'll substitute this type of material for it or that type of material. He says, we have no way of knowing uh, what type of material we used. But you can use what is called a melanized gear. It'll work for any type of cam whether it's billet, iron, whatever. So I bought one on Summit. You know, I bought it, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And, well, <laughs> I bought the wrong size. And let me let me show it to you. Here it is mocked up in the lathe. Um, the, this one here, I believe, is 431 thousandths. The a normal Chevrolet and that distributor that I bought is 491 thousandths. So I'm roughly 60 thousandths too small right here. So I'm gonna try to cut it down to right size on the lathe here. Uh, I'm trying to get it centered, this four jaw chuck, trying to get it centered up and, well, you ain't gonna get it much more centered than that right there. It may have a, oh, about a thousandth run out. That's good enough for what I'm doing. Let me get this cut down and hopefully this will work and then we'll get back to working on the truck. Well, I've never machined melanized metal before. Didn't know how hard it was. Uh, it's a lot harder than uh, high-speed steel. <laughs> I just ate up an end mill pretty bad. I don't have any carbide boring bars, uh, so I've done the next best thing. And I got me a 3 8 carbide end mill. I got it cocked just slightly where I'm using just the tip of it. And it seems to be doing pretty good. Will it work? I don't know. Am I going to try? Yes, sir. Well... <laughs> Oh, I sort of messed up. Imagine that. This material, like I said, it's hardened, and I've never worked with it before. Um, it cuts weird. It, you can't take just a little bitty cut. You got to get on in there with it. And I overboard it by four thousandths. And, well, you can see her wobble. She's wobbling pretty doggone bad. I ain't going to use it. Uh, I got back on Amazon where I bought this. Somebody asked the question, what's the gear made of? And the guy answered, it's uh, such and such steel. So it is steel, it's not cast iron. So that's good. Uh, I think it'll be okay to use it just for now. I want to hear this truck start. I mean, look at it. I've been looking at it like this for way too long. It's taking way too long to get it back together. I want to hear the thing run when we get done with it. So we're going to use this, but I am going to order melanized gear and uh, put that on when it comes in. Uh, also, no, by the way, I found my priming, oil pump priming shaft right here. Yep, I hid it on the rack over at Mama's in the basement. I found it. Anyway, let's keep on going. All right, I got my priming shaft in. I'm gonna prime the system a little bit, then we put the distributor in. I'm gonna put the plugs in and run some uh, plug wires. Probably help if I put some oil in it. <laughs> I, I'm losing my mind, I believe. Pretty sure I am. Yes, sir. I poured just a little bit down in the lifter valley, and then, well, I just forgot to put the rest of it in it. All right, let's try that again. All right, that's probably good enough. Ooh. Much, much easier to put the distributor hole down in before you get the distributor in. Ask me how I know. All right, here we go. They don't want them to go down in the hole. Great, great and wonderful. Got 
got a clue why, but it won't go down in the hole. Not an area clue. Fellers, <laughs> I have spent the better part of the last hour trying to get the distributor to go down that hole back yonder. It will not go. It likes about a half inch dropping all the way down. I tried the uh, stock distributor, wouldn't go. I tried swapping gears on my new distributor, still wouldn't go. Well, I finally climbed my fat butt up in there. I like to broke my tooth on my stud that's sticking up here. It's a wonder it didn't get slung out of the garage because that, that kind of hurt. <laughs> Anyway, climb my fat butt in there, look down in the distributor hole. That's what I see. Actually, all I saw was the head of it. I'm guessing it fell down in there when I was taking all this apart, uh, when I was tearing it down. <laughs> I'm telling you, this project right here has, has pushed me. Just all kind of little stuff like that that I haven't shown y'all. I'm telling you, this truck, if it keeps on, uh, there ain't gonna be no truck no more. Anyway, let me continue on, see if we can't get it running. All right, let's give this one more try. <laughs> Maybe it'll fit down in there this time. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gotta have my little gasket. Ain't no telling where it's at. I found it, I found it. Let us see if this will go down in there. Oh me, oh me. Oh yeah, it's already a bunch better. All right, I have 180 out with it, so let's rock it on around. Let us get some sparking plugs in. I just remember I got to get my uh, temperature sending unit out of the old heads and put in here. Let me get it from the bottom. Let me go from the bottom. No, sir. Or if I put the socket on first, will it go then? Yes, sir. All right, let me get him in on the other side and then we'll make me some wars. Well, it's been a moment since I've tuned y'all in. I've got a little bit done. Got my plug wires run and uh, I did my little wire tie, wire looms. That one there don't want to act right. I'm going to do something about it. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I got my all the wiring done pretty much. The only wires I'm using from the original harness would be for the air compressor and the alternator. And uh, on the distributor, all you need is a switch 12 volt. Well, I just took the uh, old coal wire and hooked it to the battery post on the distributor. And uh, there's a purple wire with a white stripe that runs the fuel pump. Well, I just tied it into that same wire. So as soon as I hit the key, I got power. All the old wiring, I just tucked her down in there out of the way. That don't look too bad. So, trying to think of what else I gotta do. Oh, what I'm doing next is throttle, cable bracket goes over yonder. And I think I just acquired a 750 double pumper. It has an electric choke. Uh, this is manual choke. I don't feel like running a cable inside the truck. So I'm gonna see if I can swap that electric choke on this one. If I can, that's what we'll do. And uh, unless I forget something, which <laughs> that's very possible, it's about time to fire this thing up. As soon as I get those two little things done, oh, we gotta put some antifreeze in it. And she'll be ready to roll, I believe. Well, I do believe we have a throttle bracket now. This is the uh, original one. All I did was cut this big old hunk out of the way. It was right here somewhere. It was hitting the valve covers, I had to get rid of it. These holes, I had to come this way, and then this one had to come this way and that way. I may or may not have watered them out a little too much with my little die grinder here. I do believe they'll work. I got flat washers I'm gonna put there, you know, to help that out. Anyway, let's put it on the truck, see what it does. Well, I got the throttle bracket on. You can see it right there. My little stud is just a quarter 20 bolt with a couple of jam nuts on it. I swapped my electric choke, took it off 750, put it on this one. Uh, got this exhaust underneath hooked back up. Been filling it up with antifreeze. Been trying to adjust the float levels a little bit. Dare I say it? Are we ready to finally start this thing? I do believe we are. All right, I'm gonna hit the key. Let's give her the old try. Ah, you sucker, you. I 
going to be idle it up just a little bit. Well, I'm going to have to get in it again. Doggone it. Ooh, a okay, cake, I'm too fat. Give it a little time and see what that does. We'll give her a little bit more, see what she does. girl's running. She ain't running good though. She got a bad hesitation. Just listen to this. I don't know what's doing that. I've adjusted everything I could and I got my distributor cranked all the way. If I turn it any from where it's at now, it'll die. But my timing light is showing 40 degrees. I have wondered about that timing light for a while. I believe it's junk. I got to get me another one. Uh, but I think I need to reclock my distributor and them two uh, header collectors leaking terribly. I gotta fix that. I cannot stand the exhaust leak, but it is running. Remember how I told you it was really cold nature? Well, it's been sitting there about 30 minutes idling. Well, look at this. That's all it'll do. <laughs> I might have put some cardboard in front of that radiator, I guess. All right, I just got done reclocking the distributor. I don't know how I do that, but every single time I put a distributor in on a Chevrolet, I get it off some kind of way. Anyway, I moved it around one more tooth, and then this collector gasket, I just put it on. It's a copper gasket, and it's got a lip on one side, and it don't on the other. I don't really know which way it goes. So maybe I had it backwards. I flipped it around the other way, and then that one over there was a collector gasket too. It probably started leaking. The bolts were a little loose. Probably started leaking when I got a little bit uh, angry over here taking this head off. Uh, anyway, let's fire it up and just see if I fixed anything. Backed her out of the garage because we got to go to the store. We're running on fumes. We got to get some gasoline. Also, I put uh, cardboard in front of my radiator. It just it won't warm up. I'm telling you, it's the cold nature's truck I've ever seen in my life. Also, and oh by the way, I sprayed car cleaner all around the base of the carburetor, and 
every time I would spray it up front, she'd almost die. So fingers crossed that that's the uh, hesitation issue. I'll see if I can't find a thicker gasket tomorrow. We'll change that out and maybe a remedy that problem. All right, let's head to the store. Here's where we are on this truck today. Uh, I sort of doomed us a little bit last night. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Uh, I let me say this first. I'm used to working on vehicles that are stock, don't have a you know a lumpy cam and all that. When I first started this truck up, it was just trying to set the timing by ear. Well, you know I kept advancing it until the idle smoothed out, <laughs> and that's why I thought my timing light was bad because it was showing forty something degrees of initial timing. I was like, there's no way that's right. Because when I would turn the distributor back to retard it, well, it would start dying, start uh, idling real rough. Well, you mow on. <laughs> it's a pretty lumpy cam. It's going to idle rough. Uh, once I, you know, that registered in my brain, uh, I backed the initial timing back to 12 to 11 or 12 degrees after we got back from the store. And uh, no more pinging. I took it down the road in a short piece. No more pinging. So, uh, that's what we're going to do today is fool with the timing. I want to see where my mechanical advance is at and the vacuum advance. You know, we're going to have to do some tuning on it and that'll be over the next, you know, week or two, but I want to get it close today and maybe we'll take her for, for a good drive down the road, see how she does. here's where we're at on the timing um i got the initial at about 20 degrees it's a little high i know but uh it starts up fine doesn't hesitate so i'm gonna leave it there i gotta set it there to get about 33 34 degrees total uh i have read like i've told y'all i'm not an engine builder 
but I have read that these Vortex heads like about 32 to 34 degrees. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And, you know, like I said, I'll have to tune on it for, you know, next few days. Again, get it fine-tuned. Vacuum advance, it's it's mid-40s. Uh, so I'm going to leave it where it's at for now, and we'll just drive it and tune on it. And I'm fixing to go get that car uh, gasket, put it on. Fingers crossed. Well, wrong way. Fingers crossed that that fixes that issue. Carburetor gasket is in. So let me put it on, and we'll see if that fixes the issue. Well, I changed the gasket on the carburetor. It didn't help it. Um, the only thing left to do I can think of is change out the pump discharge nozzle. That's this right here. That's where your accelerator pump shot comes out of. And they got different sizes of them. There's a 28 was on it. I got a 750 over here with a 31. I'm going to put it on there. If it fixes it, great. If it don't fix it but helps it, well, we can drill the little holes out because I don't have any more of them. Uh, so, yeah, let me get that changed out and we'll see what happens with it. All right, I got the nozzle changed out, and I also took the electric choke back off because I haven't had fast idle. I wanted to see what was going on. Well, apparently I took a trip down Dumas Lane, and I didn't put it on there right. Uh, so we, we should have a fast idle now. Let me fire it up and see what it does. That choke needs a little more adjusting and I do believe that helped it still got a small hesitation but it's completely cold so I'm gonna let it warm up and then we'll see how it does it's definitely better but we still ain't there uh, I'm gonna turn it off pull that back out and uh, we'll drill it out to I don't know, we might go to a 33 and see what that does. In case y'all are wondering how I'm drilling these little holes out in this nozzle, well, I got my little drill bit set right here. I think it goes to 39 thousandths, so I'm at 33 right now, so we can go bigger if we need to. But all you got is this little, what I think they call it a pin vise, and you stick your drill bit in there, and it sort of tightens up like a collet, and you just go to drilling it. Anyway, let's put it back on and see what it does. Well, I just drilled it out to a 37,000th hole. Y'all listen to it, tell me if it sounds any better or not. It ain't bad. It still might have just a slight hesitation, but I believe I'm gonna leave it right there for now. All right, here is where we're at. It's actually the next day again. Uh, I spent most of the day yesterday tuning on the car roster on this truck. I finally got a uh, part throttle pretty good. No hesitation. I ended up with number 72 jets in the primaries and started fooling with the secondaries. And well, I, let me just let's, just, let's just make this short and sweet. That carb roster does not belong on this truck, does not belong on the street. Uh, a double pumper mechanical secondary needs to be on a light vehicle, high RPM, a lot of horsepower. The <laughs> complete opposite of what this truck is. So I'm gonna pull it off. It's gonna be put on the shelf where it belongs until I build a motor to suit it. This is what we're gonna do. I took a three hour round trip last night, late, to my nephew's house. Got this carb roster here. It's an 1850 uh, vacuum secondary. Tell that by that right there. Uh, here's the thing though. The secondaries is a metering plate instead of a metering block, meaning I can't change jets out. See these holes? That's the jets, basically. And I could probably drill them out, but I'm not gonna do that. This little plate costs $40. I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is pull the metering blocks and float bowls off of this, the 600 double pumper in here. And I think they'll work on here. Uh, and we'll just change all that out. 
put it on, see what it does. I'm pretty sure I'll have to rejet it. Um, I don't even know what jets are in here on the primaries. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm fixing to do. So when I get that done, I'll be back. I just want to show y'all something real quick. Um, the only difference I can see in this is the 600 double pumper between this and the 1850 that I'm going to use. That hole right there is missing on the 1850. But that hole is for idle. The 1850 does not have an idle needle or an idle hole. This over here is transfer slot. It does have that. That's the only difference I can see. So I don't think it matters. So I believe it's just going to work swapping the metering blocks over to this one. Also, and oh, by the way, as you can see, the 1850, well, the choke is gone in this area here. This was on a, a dirt car, so you don't need choke. They take it off, you know, airflow. So I'm going to take the choke flapper off this one and put it on there. And then we'll be ready to put it on the truck and see how it does. With well, the RTS, got all the metering blocks in the fuel bowl swapped out. There's a poor pitiful little 600 double pumper sitting there naked as a jaybird. I pulled the choke off and, well, everything. I put the 1850 metering block and bowl back on it just so I didn't feel lonely and naked. Anyway, uh, let me tell you this real quick. Get this uh, choke flap out. I stuck a, uh, uh, what do you call it, putty knife down in there. Spread that open a little bit. Grab it here with chanty locks and just yank her out. And then that shaft will slide out. Pretty easy. I don't have my camera stand here. Uh, that's why <laughs> I ain't videoed any of that. Uh, anyway, let me show y'all this real quick. Y'all know I'm full disclosure. If I make a Dumas, I'm going to show you just so you'll learn from my mistake. <laughs> um, see this vacuum port right here? It's got a plug on it. Well, here's the double pumper that I had on the truck. It doesn't have a plug on it, and I wasn't using it. So <laughs> that's most likely where... A lot of the off-idle hesitation was coming from. Yep. Anyway, I'm glad to get rid of this double pumper. It just, it don't belong on this motor. It really don't belong on the street unless you got a really hot motor. Anyway, let's get back over the truck, put this in on, and let's see what happens. Well, I got the carburetor back on. I ain't got it filled up with fuel yet. I'll turn the key on, do that. Uh, I just want to tell y'all that the uh, primary jets, I dropped them back down to 68. I got to thinking uh, that vacuum leak, it's probably the reason I had that bad hesitation. And uh, this motor, I don't believe it's making nowhere near enough power to need 72 jets. So I dropped it down to 68s. We'll see how it does. If I have to go up in jets, that's fine. It takes about three minutes, give or take a few seconds, to change jets, so that's no big deal. Anyway, let me, let me fire it up, see how it does. Fire in the hole. I'm gonna idle it up a little bit because I don't know where that idle screw is on it called the roster. Fire in the hole again. Maybe not. Secondary butterflies, you kick it down, boom, they're open, and there's no fuel coming out of the, uh, the boosters, out of the Venturi. Nothing for probably a second or more. Of course, it bogs. Uh, well, let me just show, let me see if I can show y'all. I don't think it should be doing that. Let me go study. Alrighty, I believe I know what's going on and it hit me just as soon as I turned the camera off. I forgot this car was going on a dirt track car and whoever my nephew got this car from had done a little work to it. And <laughs> they basically turned it into a mechanical secondary without a pump shop. Uh, I, I don't know how that was going to work on a race car. I mean, I know you hold them wide open most of the time, but you still work the throttle. And it seemed like to me it had a bad hesitation. 
anyway let me show you what they did this piece right here that is connected to your secondary butterfly shaft this little piece of rod right here is connected to your primary up here to your throttle linkage right here and there's a slot that goes here that lets you be able to open the primaries all the way and in the vacuums you know it can slide on that and it vacuum second well, i'll explain that in a minute uh anyway this is this is supposed to slide in the slot well you see that right there they stuck a screw in there where when you open the primary the secondary opens with it see that it ain't supposed to do that so basically what they have is a mechanical secondary with no pump shot so it's worse than what i had with the double pumper anyway i'm gonna take a screw out and it should do all right now uh let me explain real quick vacuum secondaries difference between it and mechanical secondary this is mechanical secondary the secondary butterflies are tied to your primaries rigidly when you open one the other opens well actually the primary is going to open a little bit then the secondary start opening well vacuum secondary the motor only opens as much of the secondary that it needs that's what this little pot looking thing over here has got a diaphragm works off vacuum and it only opens up the secondaries however much it needs and they did away with that and made it mechanical secondary. And, well, it ain't going to work. Let me get that off of there. All right, I got that little screw out. It was right there. Now, you watch this arm in this slot when I work a throttle. See how it slides in that slot? And then the secondaries here will open according to vacuum and all that. That's how that works. Let's fire this thing up and see if it don't do a little bit better. Y'all listen to it now. It ain't got no hesitation. I want you to watch that little piece that I showed you right there. Watch it when I hit the throttle. I'm gonna take it for a drive, see how it does. Well, she runs much better. Did you hear that? It's loading up at idle. <laughs> Fuel pressure regulator. It doesn't regulate. It's on about nine PS of ice, and it's, I believe, flooding the carburetor. It's dying out. You can see fuel start dripping out of the boosters into the Venturis, flooding it out, so that's good. Uh, I'm sure that regulator is cheap Chinese junk. I'll be contacting Jigs about that, but it does run much better. Uh, it does ping a little bit when you're on it uh, in overdrive, you know, pulling the heel. I just pulled a little more timing out of it, and then I'm probably going to pull some out of the vacuum advance too. But other than that, it runs pretty doggone good. Oh, I'll tell you where the pinging come from. It wasn't doing it the first couple of days. Remember that night we went and got gas? Well, I put 87, 89 octane in it. And uh, yesterday, I had to go get some more gas. I put 87 in it. So that's, yeah, that's why it's pinging. Anyway, let's walk around back this to it again. Boy, it sure sounds good. Sounds pretty doggone good right there. All right, let's take her for a drive, see how she do. Um, you know, last couple days, I've been driving around out here tuning on the carburetor. And yesterday, you know, I had to make wide open throttle runs to check out the secondaries. Well, I may have gotten a long call on yesterday. I ain't real sure. <laughs> I went home and parked it. There's a woman walking her little dog uh, down the road. I was probably half a mile from her, and uh, I guess she didn't like that. So when I come by her, it looked like she pulled her phone out and uh, either took a picture of my truck or videoed me coming by her. Of course, you know, I do it under the speed limit when I come by her, but I'm going to say she probably called a lot. So we're going to have to go a different route than what I've been doing the last couple days.
pretty good. Well, if she's expecting to burn out, she won't do one. I was kind of surprised, but uh, no, I tried and she won't do it. It just pushes the truck. I don't know if the rear brakes grab that good or I don't know. Uh, I do hear that Clorox bleach will assist in burnouts. And I hear if you do it in the Winn-Dixie parking lot, it puts on a pretty good smoke show until the cops show up and you think you're gonna go to jail. That's what I hear. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> The things you do when you're young and dumb. Anyway, it runs decent. I was expecting a little more, I'll be honest with you. But it needs a little more tuning. It's still got a little pinging going on. Uh, I believe it needs some more jet work. Cause one time it'll sort of stumble. Next time it'll, you know, it'll kick you back in your seat a little bit. I'm out of time for this video. I'm going out of town tomorrow for Thanksgiving. And this is this week's video. So, yeah, I'm out of time. I'm going to keep tuning on it. Trust me. I'll get it. I'm a little slow with that type of stuff, uh, but I'll get it eventually. And when I do, well, we'll post another video of how good it runs. i tell you what, this old truck, she tested me. It took, literally took me three times as long as it should to get this done. Whew, I'm glad to have it done, though. Anyway, uh, I'll keep tuning on it. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blurp, blurp.